Hello everybody, this is Dr. Carlo Oyer and just like two days ago I was taking a shower and washing myself and saw a bulge in my left groin and I was like oh, I broke myself so I touch it and it goes in and out it's definitely a bulge it feels when you do what is it? it's an inguinal hernia then I've been making videos, patient education videos like this one for about seven to eight years. So I go to my library of videos and I really have done a video specifically about hernia education. So here we are. If you want to know the what, the why, the when, and where and how to prevent complications, this is the video you're looking for. So let's talk about hernias. Hernias can happen in different parts of the body. Essentially, it's when certain layers of the skin tissue are weakened, therefore other areas are pushed through that weakened spot, creating that bulge. Most commonly they happen in the inguinal region, right at the level of the suprapubic or right next to the, where the torso meets the thigh, but it also happens next to where you would feel the femoral pulse or a femoral hernia. But they can also happen in the abdomen near the belly button. They can happen where the muscles of the abdomen unite and other parts of the body as well. So what are the symptoms of a hernia? Well, most of the time it's a feeling of tugging or heaviness or fullness in the area where the hernia is. There's a dull pain or ache that gets worse when you stand, when you build pressure in the abdomen by lifting, coughing, sneezing, or lifting weights. And of course, seeing a lump or bulge in that area of the body. Most of the times it can lead to no symptoms at all or in, other than knowing that it's there and it's bulging and it's uncomfortable. It is when you start having pain and discomfort or even systemic symptoms like nausea and vomiting, redness and swelling that it can become potentially serious or even dangerous to the point of needing surgery or emergency corrective action for this hernia. When should you see a doctor or nurse? Well, you should see them if you notice the bulge, you should be checked up. If you have that pulling sensation, the growing, and you don't see or feel a bulge, a doctor or nurse is properly trained to do a proper exam and do certain maneuvers to encourage or uh, make it more able to feel the bulge or hernia. And sometimes, if needed be, they can order the appropriate studies like ultrasounds or CT scans to better diagnose this hernia. In most cases, we don't need to do imaging studies. The hernia is there, it's visible, it's palpable, we feel the defect, and it goes in and out. So the diagnosis is clear and evident, and no further diagnosis tests are needed. Sometimes you feel there's a bulge or a popping or an in and out sensation and the doctor cannot feel what you are describing and this is when the diagnosis tests are necessary and when they're done. Most of the time the hernia can be reduced by simple pushing but as soon as you let go the hernia comes back especially if you're standing up or you're putting pressure on that area of the hernia. If the hernia cannot be pushed back in and it's painful or discolored or red or warm to touch, that's when we think that there is an incarceration or the hernia is stuck in place, in which case we might have to do some procedures to reduce the hernia back in or to do other diagnosis tests to determine if you need emergency treatment for the hernia. So how are hernias treated? Well, most of the time you might not need any emergent treatment or no treatment at all. It depends on the symptoms you're having. Some hernias are very large and although very visible and uncomfortable having that bulge there, they are actually a little bit less dangerous because the bigger the hernia, the bigger the hole is or the weakened spot. So the area that bulges out, usually the bowel or other tissues goes in and out with ease. It is actually when the hernia is small or tight that when a hernia does pop out and a piece of tissue pops through the hernia, it might be more dangerous because it gets stuck in place and therefore becomes incarcerated. This is because the tightening causes blood flow compromise to the area that is herniated, therefore causing that area of tissue to become ischemic and start dying, 
but first before it dies it becomes inflamed and swollen and that leads to systemic symptoms like nausea and vomiting and fever and tenderness and so on. So it is the smaller hernias when they do incarcerate, the ones are more likely to require emergent surgery and repair. Surgeons can repair groin hernia in one of two ways. The best surgery for you will depend on your preferences and your surgeon's experience. It also depends on the type and the size of the hernia and whether or not this is the first time or multiple surgeries you've had for the same hernia. As in a lot of cases, hernias tend to recur even with surgery and even in the best skilled surgeon's hands, surgeries can and will recur from time to time. The two types of surgery are open surgery. During an open surgery, the surgeon just makes an incision near the hernia and opens up the tissue, gently pushes the bulging tissue back into place and puts sutures and layers, sometimes even a mesh to hold the tissue in place. During a laparoscopic surgery, the surgeon makes a few smaller holes elsewhere around the hernia. It inflates the underneath tissue with air so that he can run cameras and instruments into the area and repair the damaged tissue. Sometimes when the surgery is done to reduce an incarcerated hernia, when the surgery is done, we found that the herniated tissue is too damaged to really let it stay in place at which point the surgery might be more involved, like removing a segment of the diseased tissue, reattaching or reanastomosing that tissue, and making sure the tissue that's being pushed back into your body, it's healthy and has good blow flow. So how can you avoid the complications of a hernia? Well, you just have to be very aware of the signs and symptoms that indicate something bad's going on. If there is redness, if there is swelling, if the pain is out of proportion what you normally have, if the hernia cannot be pushed in gently, those are signs that it could be incarcerated. If you ever have worsening pain with worsening swelling, first thing you do is going to lay down flat and let gravity be put away from putting more pressure. For example, I'm standing, I'm putting gravity pressure on my hernia. If I lay down flat in the bed, then that decreases that pressure. You're going to take some Motrin, some Tylenol, and then you're going to put an ice pack over the area of the hernia. You're going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you're going to see if the hernia has indeed reduced itself. This happens more than 60 or 70 percent of the time. Just by doing this maneuver, the hernia is able to decrease the swelling and reduce itself. However, when you go back in and pull the ice pack uh, out, the hernia is still there, then you can gently try to push the herniated tissue back in place. If it does so, then you just rest and then follow up with your doctor later. If you are unable to push that bulge back in after doing these maneuvers, this is when you're going to have to go to the emergency department for possible reduction under sedation in the emergency department maybe a CT scan to determine if there is incarcerated or inflamed uh, herniated tissue into that hernia, which would then need an emergency consultation with a surgeon and possibly emergency repair. How to prevent the complications of a hernia? Well, the body is already broken. There's a weakened spot there. And depending on where the hernia is, you can make the tissue around it a little bit stronger as to avoid the progression of the hernia. But in most cases, not much you can do except prevent the deterioration or worsening of that hernia. For example, avoiding putting extra abdominal pressure, whether it be from heavy lifting, from coughing, sneezing, uh, from being chronically constipated, or from lifting weights. You want to avoid the increased pressure that would lead to that hernia getting bigger and worsening that weakened tissue over time and making the hernia worse. You must consult with the general surgeon as to when would it be appropriate to go ahead and fix this defect in the fascia as to fix what the problem is. That's all I got for today. I want to thank you for watching this video about hernias. Hopefully you learned a lot. Please share, comment, ask your questions, and go to patient education video to watch other videos like this one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.